Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled, my name is Shaggy, and today I'm doing a full solo playthrough of Warp's Edge. This is a solo-only bag-building game by designer Scott Alms. Now, I've got everything set up here for a normal game. You do have the option of going through this storybook where you get to make some decisions and that will create a unique setup. But I'll leave that for you to discover. I'm just doing the basic setup here. You're gonna wanna pick a mothership out of the numerous options. I'm choosing the easiest one, the Dread. And on the side here, it shows you exactly how to set up your enemy deck. So we took five random yellow spaceships, four random orange ships, and three random red ships. We shuffled each of those up, and then we put the red at the bottom, the orange in the middle, and the yellow on top. That's gonna create our enemy deck here, and then we drew four starting cards. I also shuffled up the skill deck right here, and you get to pick your ship. I picked the Achilles. And based on your ship selection, you're going to take these power tokens that are indicated here, and you're gonna put them in the P-O-W-E-R slots. Those are the tokens that provide you with special abilities, so depending on the ship that you select, you'll have different special abilities for each game. You then wanna set up your draw bag. You wanna take all the starting tokens. There's 10 starting tokens. And then you also want to grab whatever your yellow token is based on your ship. You want to take one of those and add it to your bag as well. And those are going to be your starting tokens for round one, or rather warp one. You put your little warp token here. It shows the number of warps for your game. And then you can see here we also have our hull marker and our shield marker right there. This particular ship has three shields and only one hull, but it has a unique special ability here where normally if you lose all your hull points, you lose the game, but not so with this ship. With this ship, if your hull reaches zero, you don't actually lose, you just end the warp immediately and you move on to the next warp. And each warp is like a separate round. You'll see how all that works. The only thing we need to do to finish setup is to draw two skill cards and pick one. So we have the palm device here. It requires an energy to activate and this says choose one token from your pool, remove it from the game, and then gain one token from the supply. That seems very good. Or we could choose home away from home. This requires one of our blue maneuver tokens to activate but it will let us refresh one skill card. Let's say, I think I'm gonna stick with the palm device. So I'm gonna grab that. We can just put it off to the side here. And this just goes to the bottom of the skill deck. And there we go, we are ready to begin. Before we do, let's just take a look at the dread and learn its special abilities. And because it's the beginning ship, it has some of the easiest special abilities to manage. Essentially, the most important thing is that it is protected, which means we cannot attack the mothership and do damage to it until we've gone through this entire deck and defeated all of these spaceships in this deck. Only after we've defeated all of these ships can we start taking out these three different sections of the mothership. Once we destroy all three sections, we win the game. But of course, we have to do that by the fourth warp. If we run out of time, then we lose. Its other special abilities deal with when we actually are attacking it, so I will go over those when we get to that point, which will be in a, in a while. Right now, our focus is just gonna be on these ships and defeating these ships. Okay, the first thing we do at the start of the warp is we draw five tokens from our draw bag. And we just put them over here. Ooh, two, three, four, five. And now we're gonna get to use these tokens to either fight off these enemies, maneuver to dodge them, or use these energy to get additional tokens to put into our bag. So let's see what we got here. We got this laser token that has a two on it. So that's a two strength laser. We have this one maneuver. We have 
a two and a one energy here. So we have a three energy and we got our special W power token. And we have a nice handy dandy little guide here for all of our power tokens. This happens to be the Warhammer, which lets us just spin this to destroy an enemy completely outright. But there's a little bit of a consequence to that and I'll show you that in a minute. So let's take a second here to look at these enemy cards and see what we're dealing with. At the top of the card, it shows how much laser power is required to defeat the enemy or how much maneuver is required to escape from the enemy. So you kind of have two choices of how you want to deal with each enemy. And below it, it shows the reward that you'll get for doing that. So if we attack this guy, we have a two laser. So if we were to attack with this two laser and you just put it below it, that would defeat this enemy, and as a reward, we'd get a one laser into our bag. So this is how we're doing our bag building. Every time we defeat one of these or evade one of them, we'll get a token into our bag. Instead, if we were to do a one maneuver, we would get a one energy token into our bag. At the bottom here, it shows if we don't defeat or evade the enemy or stun them, which I'll explain in a second, this is how much damage they're going to do back to us down here below. So each one's going to do one except for this guy. He's a little bit more, this Venom is a little bit more powerful. He'll do two damage back to us. So we definitely want to deal with this one. You can see here the reward for defeating Venom with lasers is we'll get an O power token. That seems really good. But here's what I want to do instead. I'm going to use this two laser against Viper here. That's enough to defeat it. So we take it off, we put this into our discard pile, and our reward is that symbol, which is we get to th draw three more tokens from our bag. This will go into a discard pile, and we can immediately draw three more tokens from our bag. One, two, three. Now we also have this energy here. We now have four energy. And we use energy for a couple of things. One, we can use it to activate our palm device here. It needs one energy to do so. But we can also use energy to purchase additional tokens. It's another way that we can get new tokens into our bag. You can see at the bottom it shows the cost and energy in order to purchase that particular token. I think I will use one of these energies to activate my palm device. You just put the token on top of the card, and that shows that it's activated. You don't have to use it right away. You can wait to use it till it, you know, convenient. And I think I am going to wait. I'm going to leave it just activated for now. I then think I'm going to use my three energy that I have here, and I'm going to buy another token. Now, I could buy as many as I want. I have as many buys as I have energy. But I think I want to buy one of my special power tokens. I'm going to go immediately for this Phantom Blast. So that's going to go into the bag. We'll see how that works once I draw it. And then the energy that I used will just go into the discard pile. I now think I am going to evade this scout. It only takes one to evade it, so boom. It's off, and my reward is a one energy. That again goes straight into the bag. Anytime you acquire a token, it goes right into the bag. And that goes into the discard. We now have these two enemies left. And I'm just gonna do a one laser on that one and a one evade onto the spider. Those are not enough to actually defeat either one of those, but that's okay. That's gonna stun them and keep them from attacking us back, as you'll see. And now I just have my Warhammer I don't want to use it, but that's okay because I have a little hold here, and you can see here it says hold one. That means I can hold that over until the next turn. You can also see down here, another thing that you can use energy for, you can spend one energy to heal two of your shields. So there you go. When you're done with your turn, you would take anything that you haven't used or that you don't have in holding, you'd put it in your discard pile, and now the enemies get to attack back. But because we assigned a token to them this round, 
they are stunned and they can't attack us back. And we just move the token above them like that. Those will still apply in the next round. We'll get to add those to whatever we add to them, but that's a way of keeping them from attacking us. Now we fill in so that we have four more enemies left and we get to draw five more tokens. One, two, three, four, five, which is all the tokens in our bag. We can now put this over from our hold and we're ready to go again. Now you can see here, a couple of these uh, new enemies have some special abilities that we need to deal with. So the Reaver here says that at the end of each turn, discard all laser tokens from this enemy. So if we want to attack the Reaver with lasers, we're going to want to do all three damage all in one turn. And the Vengeance here, you can see we now have an orange enemy. This one says, the enemy deals one damage. If stunned, this enemy deals three damage instead. So the Vengeance, again, is an enemy that we don't necessarily want to just stun. We want to be able to take it out all in one turn. Well, I tell you what, I have an idea. This Vengeance, this looks like a great opportunity to use the Warhammer. Boom. So when we use the Warhammer, it immediately destroys the enemy. And we get the Destroyed Award. So in this case, it's going to be a three laser. That's fantastic. Now, the downside to using the Warhammer is that in this turn, we cannot stun these enemies with lasers. I think that's gonna be okay though. Now, the next thing I wanna do is use this Evade. So now we have one Evade, two Evade. That's the amount of evasion that we need to ignore the spider. You can see here, the reward is gonna be a two laser for that. And these will go in the discard. I now want to use this P ability. This is our Phantom Blast power token. Now for this one, we are gonna place this between two enemies and it's going to attack both of them as if it were a two laser. How great is that? It counts as a two laser against both targets. So that's gonna be plenty to defeat this Venom. And our reward, as you can see right there, is we get an O token. It goes right into the bag. Now, when this happens, this stays with this enemy. So we still have two against the Reaver, and we can easily finish it off with that one. That's three. These go in the discard, and our reward is another Phantom Blast token. Excellent. Now we have completely defeated the enemies. That doesn't mean we get to attack the Dread. We have to actually go through this entire deck before we can attack the Dread. But we can still spend our tokens here. And I'm thinking I want to just buy another one of those lasers with this one energy. That's the only thing that you can do with one energy. I could hold it over for next time, but I want that laser in the bag. I now have five tokens in this bag, so I'm gonna get to have another turn. If I were to try to draw tokens from this bag and I couldn't draw out five, then the warp would end, the round would end, and we'd have to go to the next warp. And there you go, that's the end of that turn. Draw out four more of these. We got some real tough ones now. Obviously we skipped the uh, we skipped the enemy attack phase because all the enemies were gone. And we get to go again. Now look at this. We have some major laser power here, which is nice because these guys are tough. Let's look here. This enemy cannot be stunned by lasers. Okay. This enemy cannot be attacked by value one lasers. And this ability cannot be stunned. Okay. And then we have a red out here. This enemy deals four damage to your shields. If your shields are at zero, it deals one damage to your hull instead. Wow. So this guy is super rough. 
Well, we definitely want to hit with this, don't we? Feels like we might be able to take both of these guys out with one of these. That's going to be two against each of them, so then they'll just need four. Oh, we'll get very close. Now, this token is our overdrive. It kind of works similar to the Phantom Blast in that you put it between two of these uh, enemies, and it counts as one maneuver against both of them. But before we do that here... If we do that against both of those, that's two laser damage to each of them. This one cannot be attacked by one lasers, but this one can. We need four here. So we'd want both of those and this two. That would work. Or what if we did this? Okay, I have an even better idea. What if we do that? That's four, five, six. So this is destroyed. And we're going to get an R, one of these cool R tokens, into our bag. What's that one called? The randomizer. All right. We'll see how that works later. So this still has two against it. We can place this two on it. That's four. That's not enough to destroy it, but that's okay. And then we could put this here. That's going to stun both of those guys. So they won't attack us. And then I will use the palm device. You remove the token from it, and then you just put it sideways or upside down or something to indicate that you've exhausted. You can only use it once per warp. This lets me choose a token from my pool, remove it from the game, and then I can get any token that I want. Hmm, I'm going to go out on a risk here. Let's get one of these really expensive three energies so we can start buying stuff faster in the future. And there we go. Unfortunately, we weren't able to defeat any of these other enemies, but we didn't take any damage, so that's good. They can't attack us. These go up here. When we go to try to draw five, we can't, and that ends the warp. So at the end of the warp, you do a couple of things. You get to untap all of your uh, skill cards. All of your tokens that you used and the ones here on the enemies and everything just go into your discard pile. All of the enemies that are out get discarded. You refill up your bag with all your tokens. So we've already built up our bag significantly. You shuffle up your discarded enemies. Stick it back on top of the pile. And you get to draw two skill cards and pick one to keep. Explosive Rhythm. This will take two energy to activate, but tokens you gain from evade rewards this turn go directly into your pool. Ooh, wow, that could be useful. Or loop around, this has an ongoing ability. So you just have to pay one evade one time, and then this will be good for uh, the rest of the game. In step four of each turn, you may return to the bag any number of tokens you draw, then draw that number of tokens again. Well, that seems really useful. So let's go ahead and grab that one. I like that. Move our warp marker. Deal out our four enemies. And as you can see here, some of the big hard guys can come right away. Oh my goodness. That's going to be trouble right there. <laughs> and there we go. We are ready for the second warp of the game. My intention was to skip the second warp completely, but look at where we are. We've defeated all the enemies except for this last Reaver, and I think we have a chance to actually do some damage to the mothership. So let's see how all this is going to go down. I have these two guys right here. That's going to be two maneuver against this Reaver. A little bit of a waste, but that's all we have. Our reward is we get to draw three from the bag. And I just put these in there. 
Those are actually the last three chips that are in the bag. But with that, we can do some serious damage. And now we have a clear shot on the Dread. As we mentioned earlier, the Dread is protected, so we have to clear all of the enemies away before we can attack. As you can see here, it's made up of three different sections, which are all going to attack and do damage. The other bad thing is it has stun resistance, which means it actually can't be stunned by these lasers that we have. So we are going to be taking a little bit of damage, but the warp's going to end anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. It also has dreaded strength, which means it does more damage after you have defeated certain sections of it. So once one of the sections is damaged, the other two will do one extra damage. And then once you've defeated two section, the last section will do two extra damage. Well, this will do two damage. It looks like we're only going to be able to defeat one of the sections. And we might as well attack that middle. That's the most difficult. It takes eight damage to do it. And we could do that. This is doing two damage to each section. We can then add three to this middle. That's going to be all eight that we need to defeat that. So we put this here. We get this reward that's in the corner, which is a token of our choice. Let's get some more of that. It goes into our bag. And that's all we can do. So we're actually taking six damage here. One, two, three. Our ship is destroyed. But because we're in the Achilles, when our hull reaches zeros, we don't actually lose the game. We just reset our hull and our shields to the max, and the warp ends immediately, which it would have anyway. Now, anytime you take damage to your shields, you have to also remove two tokens of your choice from your discard pile out of the game. Now, that only applies to shield damage and not hull damage. So when the Dread did two damage to our shields, we would have to remove two tokens, and I'm going to remove these two energy tokens. And there we go. So we reached the end of the warp, We'll do all the things that we would normally do. Reactivate our uh, skills. We put all of our tokens back into the bag. Oh, and that's right. And this will also go back into the bag. But anything in your hold, you get to keep in there. So everything but that is going to go back into the bag. I'm actually surprised that we were able to do some damage on, uh, on, just on the second warp there. We had a lot of uh, success in that in that second round. So we're gonna move on to the third. Let's actually see what our two skill cards are. We have Old Necklace, ignore all mothership attacks and abilities this turn. That seems incredibly useful. Move one enemy from the row to the bottom of the deck. Hmm, that could be useful, but I like this Old Necklace. Okay, let's go to that third warp.
Here we go, warp three. We've taken care of all the enemies and we are absolutely loaded to bear. In fact, this is gonna be super easy. Six laser attack there, six laser attack there. Boom, boom, and the dread goes down. That was a lot easier. We even had that left over. We had quite a few tokens in our bag here, but not enough to do another round. So there you go. That was uh, that was a lot easier than I expected, but this is the uh, easiest of the motherships. And uh, so super beginning, but there you go. That's a win. We didn't even need to use this. As you can see here, we activated the loop around and when you have an ongoing ability, you just activate it once and it's ready to go. That ongoing ability lasts for the whole game. You do lose the token for the rest of the game. It just sits there. But there you go. That was a complete play of Warp's Edge. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.